Okay, so I'm David Kutader, and I am here to talk about password policies and a password policy module called PPM. I'm speaking for about 15 minutes. So here's the plan. Um, first, I will say a few words about LTB project, my company and me. Um, then I will talk about um, the password policy of Valet. Uh, then I talk about um, the, um, the PPM uh, features, the PPM design. And finally, I'll try to present some conclusions. So some words about me. Um, I've been trying in IT um, since about uh, 10 years. And since the beginning, I am an open, so an open source enthusiast. For example, I'm a contributor to projects like uh, Lemon LDAP and LTB project. Um, um, I, um, I was um, <coughs> um, I was specialized um, very soon in identity. It's a topic I really like, and uh, since the beginning I was an integrator, and now I am in charge of um, the identity team at Linagora. By the way, uh, Linagora is a French IT service company, which is about 20 years old. Um, as a company specialized in open source, uh, its activities are classically um, integration, support, and uh, software addition. Um, it's today its main, um, its main fight is about digital sovereignty. Um, the LinID, by the way, uh, LinID is both the name of the, the identity team and also uh, the name of the product stack based upon OpenLDAP. Um, I won't offend you by presenting OpenLDAP. Um, LinID Directory Manager, which is a web oriented user interface to LDAP servers. Uh, Lemon LDAP and LDC project. So, um, so uh, LTB project has been uh, presented before. Um, it's a really um, an interesting project. Please visit LTB project. Um, I just say that LTB project is um, owning the, the code for PPM, so just give a look. So let me introduce some password policy concepts. Um, so first, what is a password policy? A password policy is simply a set of rules about the user password. And we can categorize these rules uh, in two categories. So um, rules about length, uh, strength, sorry, rules about password duration, and rules about clocking. Um, rules about uh, strength are about the password length, um, about um, the mandatory use or uh, prohibition of some character classes, and um, the blacklisting of some words also. Well, any criterion that can reject the password storage. Um, rules about password duration are about forcing the user to change his password after uh, some fixed or inactivity delay. Um, about um, forbidding the reu reuse of uh, old passwords. And also um, to the prohibition also to change the password before a delay. Um, the looking rules, um, looking rules are about um, the ability to force a user to change his password. Uh, are about the ability to lock the password before, uh, after some bad authentications or some unusual activity de detection, for example. So as always with security, it's a matter of balance. Um, see the balance at the right side. Um, you have to balance between, um, if you are in, in charge of the password policy, you have to balance between uh, strength constraints, for example, and um, duration constraints. Indeed, indeed uh, duration constraints are mitigating stealing attacks, and um, strength constraints are mitigating brute force attacks. Uh, yet, too strong duration constraints will result in the user to, to choose weak passwords, uh, or worse, to write them down. So this would collapse all our efforts to impose um, a password policy, well, um, to impose a password which is hard to find from an attacker. Um, another balanced example is about uh, locking rules. Uh, you have to balance between heavy and light locking rules. Uh, with two heavy locking rules, uh, two heavy locking rules will uh, uh, permit um, the, some denial of service attacks and uh, two light locking rules 
uh, will allow an, an attacker to try brute force attacks. So that's for the concept. Uh, uh, now let's talk about normalization and standards. Uh, the reality is that there, are, there is no universal pas password policy today. Uh, yet there are some um, considerations, some recommendations and standards. Uh, for example, the National Institute of Standards and Technology has published a general recommendation for password policies. Um, it, will, it is uh, quite light because you have only a limitation about the length, a minimum of eight characters, uh, no character class required, and uh, no periodic change required either. Um, there is also an internet draft uh, published in uh, 1999 that some of you know very well. Uh, it has been used as a reference to code the open end up password policy overlay. And it is also um, uh, more or less implemented in various directories, uh, such as Sun or Tivoli directories. So what is in this draft? <coughs> um, first of all, um, you must know that internet draft expire after, after a period of six months. So it has expir expired about uh, 10 years ago. Well, um, uh, many components rely, rely on this, so it is not so far from a standard. Anyway, uh, the, um, the draft defines many things. Uh, the functional specifications about the password policy, uh, the LDAP schemas also, uh, the LDAP schemas for the password policies and the operational attributes to maintain it, uh, the LDAP extended requests and response controls, uh, general recommendations, for managing password policies, especially the scopes of the policy. And uh, finally, uh, replication and security considerations also. Um, however, it does not define the strengths of the password policy. It, it's, in fact, it's considered as implementation specific. And also, it does not define an automatic way um, to, re to reset a password for a user after it is reset by a, um, an admin. There is no automatic way to do it. So now, uh, let's give a look at the password policy overlay. So the password policy overlay, overlay implement um, the, the specification of the internet draft. So you have the, the LDAP schema. You have also the extended requests and responses. And you have, of course, the client and server implementations. Yet there are some elements that are not implemented in uh, the open LDAP password policy. Um, for example, the support of protection against, against brute force attacks with a password minimum delay. I'd yes, like question? To, I'd like to say that uh, this is part of the version 10 draft and it's actually implemented and will be pushed soon. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> um, so, um, yes, yeah, there are a lot of elements that are not implemented. But, um, for example, there are, um, there are not also the um, password last success and password maximum idle attributes, um, which uh, permit the locking, some type, some kind of locking. Uh, the password max length also is not implemented. Um, there is no, uh, no implementation for um, period of validity with password, minima, password start time and password end time, for example. And there are not, um, well, we will see how the password policy work. But um, there is no uh, password policy man managed by your uh, groups or by scopes. So here is uh, uh, it's how the password policy works. Uh, so you can see uh, the user tries to modify his password. Uh, the LDAP directory is made of a user branch and um, a password policy branch. So when, when changing the, um, the password, um, the password poli the policy overlay is looking for the right policy to apply. Uh, as you might know, there are two types of policies, the default policy and the overloaded uh, policy specific to an entry. Um, here you can see the user, the user Daniel Jackson has an attribute named password policy subentry pointing to the uh, password policy to apply, the specific password policy to apply. So the overlay applies this policy. So in this case, um, the password uh, must not be changed um, if it was already changed less, 
than uh, 10 minutes ago. Um, you can see a lot of attributes defining, defining this. You can see that um, the password uh, can't be in the history of five passwords. And uh, you can see that there is um, the password must verify uh, password check module. The password check module um, can be any library that gets the user the end and uh, the password and returns OK or KO. So in this case, the, um, the password policy um, is calling the PPM library, which is on the LDAP server. So the PPM library reads its configuration file here, and uh, it checks the user DN and password. And if both the policy overlay and uh, the PPM library checks are successful, then the password is accepted, and it is rejected with an appropriate message. Uh, last, th last thing, um, you can maybe you can notice, but there are also the duration and locking rules in the same policy object. For example, um, you can see that the, the password message um, um, user must change his password after a period of one year here, uh, and also there will be a warning one month before it expires. And for the locking rules, for example, um, you can see that. Um, uh, here, uh, you will have a maximum number of 10 bad authentication because be before um, the user is locked. So, um, let's give a look at the PPM library. So, um, the aim of the PPM library is to complete the password strength rules of the policy overlay. It has to be extensible, it has to be efficient, uh, only at some point because uh, the password, uh, the PPM library is only called for password changes. And it must be secured, of course. Uh, as far as I know, uh, the code has not been reviewed by any security team, but you know with open source, so we never know. So the PPM is a C library of about 600 line lines of code. Um, it is provided as um, Debian and Red Hat packages for the NetApp. Um, the current version is uh, 1.8, published in um, August 2019. And uh, of course, it is under, um, under Open NetApp public license. So what are the PPM features? Um, the main features, for the main features are about uh, the character classes. So first of all, you must define the character each character class. Then you can, uh, for each class, you can define a minimum, a minimum number of characters and a minimum number of characters for getting a point. And finally, you can define a minimum quality. So um, here, for example, you can see the uppercase is defined with these characters uh, and it requires zero minimum and one minimum character for getting a point. So, um, Let's consider, for example, the secure pass on the right side. So if you re reorganize the characters by class, uh, you can count um, two upper, three, uh, five um, lower, and three digits. Um, so in our example, uh, you only need to have one character of each class for getting a point. So here, you have three points. Uh, so in, in, uh, you, you, in this example, um, the password is valid because there is no minimum number of characters needed for each class. And also, the, you have three points, and the minimum quality is precisely three. Um, the PPM is also defining some other features. Um, first, the maximum length parameter uh, we mostly use for compatibility reasons. Uh, it also defines a uh, check um, that the password does not contain any word from the relative distinguished name, the check name criterion. Uh, it also defines a set of forbidden characters. It also defines a maximum number of characters for, um, for a specific class. Uh, and it, uh, it specifies also um, the check against cracklib, which is a famous password cracking library based on dictionaries. So in this example, uh, you have a maximum length of 12, for example. Um, you must not contain any monetary symbol, and you must pass the check at the end and correctly the uh, criteria. criteria. Uh, so just to, just to, to finish, um, to illustrate the, 
the, the checker and criterion, for example, the, the password secret uh, will be okay with this uh, user Daniel Jackson, but the password Daniel is not okay. So to conclude, I would like just to give four ideas of improvements. Um, the first, uh, the first one is to write a standard for all these extended uh, strength password policies, because you know only a standard can get things done. Uh, the second one uh, is to design a password rejection criterion based on any, uh, any context criterion. So for example, any attribute in the LDAP entry, any attribute linked to the LDAP entry, also any environment variable such as client IP, IP etc. Uh, the third one is to um, find a way to bind password policies to group of users. And finally, the last one is to um, implement some kind of protection, uh, some, some kind of um, automatic clogging rules. So there is um, the attributes defined in the ITF draft, and uh, there is also um, an overlay which is called uh, exponential lockout. Uh, here, I put the reference here. So that's all. Thank you for your attention, and if you have some questions. We only have time. Do we have time for one question? Okay, I'll make it very simple one. Um, is there a way to restrict passwords to the US ASCII character set? Um, in the PPM policy, uh, actually, in the PPM library, um, no, it's not a feature, but uh, it could be a... Uh, I, I would advise adding that, mm -hmm. uh, because the history of the user password attribute uh, is convoluted and it wasn't very well defined in the first place. So people logging in from machines with a different uh, native character set will not be able to log in if they have characters outside the US ASCII character set. Yes. It's a good thing to avoid. Things is interesting, yes. Allowing that. Hmm? Just a thought. Okay. <laughs> Feel free to open an issue. <coughs> Thank you.